Good morning. It is a beautiful sunny morning here and I hope the sun is shining where you're at also. But today, I am joining a collaboration with the wonderful Blessed Homestead and we are to make an easy meal that can be in a, in a uh, crock pot or in a casserole dish. And I have one that I got from Against All Grain and it is a wonderful pulled chicken recipe for in the crock pot. We've all had pulled pork before, but this is pulled chicken. And so I just thought that I would show you just how easy it is, because I have to leave to go to church in less than 35 minutes. So let's get started. So anyways, this is our ingredients. And honestly, the hardest part of this whole thing is getting all your spices ready. <laughs> because this is what you're going to need. You are going to need one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You are going to need one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You're going to need three quarter cup of a diced onion, a half a cup plus two tablespoons of white vinegar, a half a cup of honey, a quarter of a cup of tomato paste, two tablespoons of coconut aminos, which what I did is I got out a little bowl and I put all the rest in this little bowl. Coconut aminos would be a substitution for soy sauce. So if you're not opposed to using soy sauce, go ahead and use soy sauce. Don't go out and buy something that you'll never use again. Um, one and a half tablespoons of liquid smoke, two teaspoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of fish sauce, one and a half teaspoons of chili powder, which is in here, and one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon of allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And all we are going to do is dump all these ingredients along with our chicken into this crock pot. So I just put my chicken in here and I am just going to literally dump everything in here. We are going to cook this on high for at least three hours and that will be the time that I'll be home from church. So we will finish up when I get home and there isn't a whole lot more to do. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so we're home from church and now my husband has volunteered to help me and he is removing the chicken from the pot and he's just going to shred this with two forks. Is it tender? Mm -hmm. Oh good. So we put the shredded chicken back into the crock pot, keeping it on high and we are going to cook that for another one hour. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the coleslaw because actually this goes on top of the sandwich. So let me show you how to do that. I have two and a half cups of shredded coleslaw that I happen to buy in a bag. The recipe calls for a cup of purple cabbage, shredded, a cup of shredded regular cabbage, and a half a cup of shredded carrots. Well, as you can see, I went the easy way because I knew it was going to be a Sunday afternoon and I just bought some coleslaw in a bag. And what we're going to add now, if I will get a spoon here, is a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise. And if you are on the paleo diet, as against all grain, the cookbook here is basically a paleo diet you will realize that they do not use store-bought mayonnaise. I do. They do have a recipe in this book to make your own mayonnaise. The other thing we're going to add here is a tablespoon of red onion, and we are going to add a half a teaspoon of honey, 
and then we are going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a dash of pepper, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, We are just going to mix this up very well, and then we are going to put this in the refrigerator to chill until our cold chicken is completely done. And that's all that is. So I will show you what our sandwiches look like when everything is complete. Our chicken is all ready, and all we are going to do is put some onto a bun. Then we are going to put a little bit of coleslaw on top. And of course you can have it on the side, but they recommend that this is the way the sandwich was made. And that's all there is to it. I hope you give this a try. And if you do, please let me know. And I look forward to your comments. Don't forget to like and share also. And I'll talk to you in just a little bit. Today's verse is from Psalm 119, verse 71. It was good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. After I had mentioned a quote by Dietrich Bonhoeffer last week, I decided that I wanted to take a closer look at who he was and the significance of his life and his ministry. And you know, if there was ever a Christian who practiced what he preached? It was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was born at the beginning of the 20th century. He was a theologian and was adored by evangelicals and liberals alike. He rallied against cheap grace of the German church. Bonhoeffer heralded what he called costly grace, a grace that might cost a Christian their very life. After Hitler rose to power, Bonhoeffer left his post at Union Theological Seminary in New York and his new fiance to return to Nazi Germany. Bonhoeffer realized that Hitler intended to use the German church for his own purposes which he refused to recognize that church since it had become an instrument for Hitler's policies. Bonhoeffer became a counterintelligence agent and a courier for communication with foreign organizations in Sweden and in Switzerland. Bonhoeffer was already in prison for smuggling Jews, yet the Nazis implicated him in the assassination plot of Adolf Hitler's. Here is just a few of Bonhoeffer's quotes. A God who let us prove his existence would be an idol. The ultimate test of a moral society is the kind of world that it leaves its children. One act of obedience is better than 100 sermons. We must learn to regard people less in light of what they do or don't do and more in the light of what they suffer. Action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. God's truth judges created things out of love and Satan's truth judges them out of envy and hatred. Only he who believes is obedient, and only he who is obedient believes. To endure the cross is not tragedy. It is a suffering which is the fruit of an exclusive allegiance to Jesus Christ. There is no way to peace along the way to safety, for peace must be dared. It is the great venture. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless 
Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Being a Christian is less about cautiously avoiding sin than about courageously and actively doing God's will. When Christ calls a man, he bids him to come and die. This German pastor was executed by the Nazi regime in a concentration camp on April 9, 1945, just two weeks before the United States liberated the camp. When he died, he famously remarked to another prisoner, this is the end, but for me, it's the beginning. So with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And after reading about the remarkable courage and faith of this man, I stand humbled. And I pray that by the grace of God, I too will be able to face with courage and with God's strength anything and everything that might lie in my path. So God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow.